The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 7th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered there. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you have most of the U.S. indices trading to the upside. You've got the Dow that is the stinker out there. It's trading down about um, 48 points right now, really off about one-tenth percent. So not a big deal out there. If we take a look at what's going on in the other U.S. indices, the S&P is basically flat. It's up a buck sixty. Uh, the Nasdaq's up 13 points. That's flat. Russell's not flat. It's up 27 points or one and a half percent. You've got the uh, semis up 30 points. That's nearly one percent. Trend is up one to four tenths, 213 points. Gold is up 19 bucks. Silver's up 38 cents. Lights we crude up a buck. Seven natural gas up four pennies. The 30-year Treasury printed out at 123.31. That's off two ticks. Now leading the charge, the upside. You've got MicroStrategy, twelve dollars and change. Saya, the freight company, twelve dollars and change. Uh, Super Microcomputer, eleven bucks and change. Mercado Libre, thirteen dollars. To the downside, it's Eli Lilly off ten dollars. O'Reilly Automotive about ten. Biogen, nine thirty. Costco's up seven and change. Vertex Pharmaceuticals seven. So we've got things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at let's begin let's begin with the new profiles so let's start there because we do have new profiles for you to take a look at so you want to write these uh, on your pad of paper i would think that's the es mini so the top of the profile you can't see because price is sitting right on it that's at 4446 that's resistance we're trading at 4448 it's a bullish structured profile the bullish structure profile has support between 4394 and 4407 this profile is within the prior profile those of you that have listened to the show long enough, you know what that means. That means what? That means a consolidation. Expect and anticipate a continued consolidation. Well, it turns out the NQ has the exact same message. Its profile level, the top of which is at 15,258, the bottom, which is 14. Uh, 969 in the center, this is a bear structure profile, 15,142. 15,142 is the real key level to watch. A close below that should then take us down to 14,969. So we have both two new profiles, the ES and the NQ. Well, we really have one in the Russell, too. We'll talk about that momentarily. Those two have new profiles that form with inside the prior profiles. The message there is to expect and anticipate a further consolidation. Turns out the new profile that confirmed yesterday inside the Russell 2000, that profile wraps around the prior profile. That too is a message of consolidation. Now yesterday, price got all the way down to the bottom of that profile, which was 1834. 
I tested it, rejected it. It is bearish in structure. So the sell zone here, price is approaching the sell zone. It's between 1891 and 1919. In the case of the uh, Dow, we skipped over the Dow. No new profiles there. Really, I'd be focused really from a profile standpoint on its weekly profiles between 33,695 and 34,888. So those are the new profiles that you've got. We have a top in the, many, in the ES. We have a top in the NQ. We have a top inside the Russell. And if we go back far enough, Stevie can find a top inside of the uh, Dow. But what has not broken here are key levels of support. And what the uh, three new profiles that just formed are communicating to you and I is let's not be surprised if a consolidating sideways, sideways market continues. Now, that's good for each of you that are day traders out there because then you're going to want to get down and find what signals are providing the best uh, information for that day because the market is much like the ocean. You know, and you get waves that come in, and those wave change patterns day to day, hour to hour sometimes out there. And so you want to be able to utilize these technical tools that you and I use here each and every day. So that's what's going on on the larger picture. Let's go take a look at a smaller picture. So talk about, okay, we're in a consolidated market, intraday type trading out there. Let's go see what kind of signal information we can find, if any, from the S&P 500 via the ES Mini. So we begin on the upper left-hand side. You'll see that was a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now my software is not going to pick up the four river evening star it'll only pick up the three river evening star out there but that is a uh, bearish reversal candle situation we've already discussed that now on a five hour time frame chart out here yesterday when we were live on the show we were taking a look at the td nine count bottom that was forming out there well it turned out to be a really big td nine count bottom a gigantic hammer candle that formed between that uh, nine and two p.m session out there the low of that hammer candle and the low of that td nine count is really the key low out there there. That key low turns out to be 441950. You should have that on your pad of paper as well. Why? Well, a close below that would take you to 440150. Why do you say that, Steve? Well, 4401 is the TD9 count breakout level. 4413 is the breakout level on the four hour time frame chart, but it did not generate a bottoming signal. Not that oh, it does have the topping pattern out there, it was the TD9 count that identified the top, but we don't have the bottoming signal like we do on the five hour chart, nor do we have the bottoming signal like we do on the two hour chart. The two hour chart formed a nice TD9 count bottom just above breakout support at 4418. Price right now is above the top of its profile and above its oscillator and change line. Now, the oscillator and change line here is red, so it's not as strong as a green oscillator and change line. If it were green, Stevie would say the message of the two hour chart is that the ES Mini wants to get to 4484. We don't know if that's the case right now. But what we can say is odds favor a move up to 44.55. Hmm, how'd you get that, Steve-O? Excellent question. That's the top of the four-hour uh, time frame chart out there. So that's a, that's the two-hour chart that takes us up to the four-hour chart out there. If we take a look at the hourly, the 30 minutes has a nice TD9 count bottom out there. Price needs to close above. I don't know what price needs to close above there. Well, the TD9 count bottom had formed out here. This is the one that formed at 4 o'clock this morning. That was tested and rejected today. So that's a bullish outcome. And with price above 44.46.50, um, that's suggesting the ES Mini wants to go target 44.67. So let's go way out of our way here. The ES Mini, as we speak right now, should target 44.55 to 44.67. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. 
Teddy Kegstaff breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So I did say that the yes mini should uh, move a bit higher out there uh, just to uh, make sure of that before anybody takes any action. Let's look at the uh, market breadth out there. So we've got the 30-minute market breadth for the S&P 500. Presently, there's 178 instruments trading above profile versus 139 below. So we have a bullish crossover. So that makes sense. That's a, that supports the idea of a further rally. Uh, we'd like that to be supported with the NQ as well. So let's take a look at its numbers, 34 above, 26 below. So the 30 minute time frame for both the S&P and the NQ are uh, bullish. So let's look at the other four time frames that we have out here. And for the S&P 500, we're bearish on the 60, but we're bullish 240 daily and weekly. And that bearishness on the 60 is 193 above, 204 below. So I would say if that shifts, then we should expect and anticipate a further rally like to the target levels that uh, we took a look at. If we look at the NDX 100, it's bearish for its 60, 240 and daily. So here comes the chop. Right, so the ES Mini is not just going to be able to take off. It's really the NQ that's somewhat controlling the markets out there. So now what this says is, yeah, the ES wants to target those levels you and I looked at, but we've got choppy market conditions here. Um, and so expect there to be a lot of uh, chop and a lot of flop. All right. So we've done that. Let's take a look at our first request. We've got four or five that have come in. So let's get to those. Brent to Martinez, California, is first up here. Brent says, uh, good morning, Steve. Good morning, Brent. You'd like the analysis on IPI. That's Intrepid Potash out here. You're long from the 18s, looking at the A to B equals CD pattern that formed. 
We have the A to B equals CD. One to one gets us up to 2620 out there. The retracement was about a 39% retracement. Oftentimes, when we do less than a 0.6 rate, oftentimes you'll do more than a one to one A to B equals CD to the upside. If we are on the left side of the C to D leg, I would be saying we're going to head up towards 2772. I'd still favor we likely do that. On a weekly chart, price is above the top of its profile, so that's a beautiful thing. Long way to go before you get to profiles on a monthly time frame. Let's further read the question. Looking at the A to B equals CD pattern is forming, and the gap left back in May. Those both came together around 25, so it looks like a price, tar a price target. Anything else in the charting system? And have a fantastic and wonderful weekend. You do the same, Brent. So let's go take a look at our other charts. So you've got that confirmed. It's confirmed A to B equals CD. The uh, volume yesterday, 258,000 shares taken out 189,000 shares. So you do have a confirmed A to B equals CD. Is there anything that's going to get in the way? That's really what Brent is asking. So let's go find out if there's anything, any caution signs that we have to be aware of with IPI. Turns out today is going to generate a TD9 count top, which will complete on Monday. So odds favor we get a short-term top either today or Monday with a pullback towards its oscillator and change line. What I would say right now, Brent, is that that pullback should take us towards 2253, the top of its daily profile. That's what the daily chart shows. The weekly chart, as we mentioned, it's bullish. Last week closed above the top of its profile. This week is going to do the same. So that tells us about a change in trend. This did form a wave seven bottom. The daily time frame chart formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And on the monthly time frame chart, I don't have anything out here to really assist us. Just price trading between breakout support at 816 and uh, breakdown resistance at about 34.79, it looks like, or 75 out there. So I like Intrepid Potash. I like what it looks like today. Um, this is going to be day number six uh, to the upside out there. If we take a look at consecutive days higher and lower, Brent, the last time we had six consecutive days out here was back on the trading day of June 8th, and that led to a sideways move to a bit lower out there. I'm not saying that's going to repeat that pattern. What I am saying, though, is you've got a TD9 count after a six-day move to the upside. You should get a short-term top that forms today or on Monday. So thanks so much for writing in. You have a fantastic weekend as well, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Dan inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at ticker symbol BLNK. And uh, Dan is uh, liking the daily activity. So BLNK, let me, uh, God, why didn't it go over there? BLNK, here we go. Trading out at about $6.50 right now. Now, Dan was interested in the longer term profile level. So with regard to profiles, you're above the daily top of the profile at 603. So that's a beautiful thing. You're taking out a swing point that had volume of 1.8 million shares. You're already at 937. So you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. We can draw that in here as we speak right now. Of course, it depends on the close. So uh, but let's draw in the A to B line. Let's go ahead and copy that. Looks like what we're doing here, Dan, is we're headed up towards the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Yeah, we're headed up towards it. So the one to one on um, blink charging. Let me give you that. Uh, let me give you the exact number. I'll do that on my other system out there. I don't have to give you an estimation. So the one to one price projection level, 699, a 49 percent retracement there. So odds favor uh, that this does a more than a one to one. Wow, 730 is the uh, one to one point two seven two and 735 is a TD nine count breakdown level. So it looks to me like that's where this is headed to. You've got a nice uh, weekly TD nine count bottom. Uh, this would say over time you want to get to it wants to get to 802. The monthly is going to complete a TD9 count bottom this month. That says a move up to 1188. So Dan, oh, I like a blink out here, BLNK, um, and it does look like this wants to continue to move higher. Yesterday was the one day pullback out there, so this may continue to run higher for the next several days. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, blink and uh, profile levels. Really nothing on the uh, week. Well, the weekly. There is profile level. It's right up at that 802 area. It's really 799 and 802. So 799 is a profile. 802 on the weekly is a TD9 count breakdown resistance. The monthly out there, profile level is up at $16 and change and 1876. So 1618 and 1876 would be the profile level. So, Dan, thanks so much for the request out there. Uh, Jack777, that sounds like a. Uh, slot machine to me uh, wants to take a look at ticker symbol EPD out there as a dividend play. 
So EPD trading out at about 26.53 is trading between profiles. So the first thing that you want to write down on your pad of paper there, Jack, uh, is uh, support at 26.15, and the sell zone is where it's trading right now, and that's between 26.45 and 26.53. Those are your profile levels. Now, what else do we have out here on the daily time frame? So we pull this back. So you've got an A to B equals CD out there. The B point will draw it in. Did volume of 3.75 million shares? You cross that with lighter volume. That does not mean that does not mean that you won't have the A to B equals CD pattern. And it looks like this. We'll just draw in the small one, the conservative version here. So here's A to B. We'll just simply go ahead and I'm just going to move that over to the C to D leg. Just the approximation. So you can see that this too wants to target that 2703 level, and 2703 is the TD nine count breakdown area out there on a weekly time frame. Now you're looking at this from a weekly, uh, longer term play. Weekly is bullish because it's above a bearish structure weekly profile. So this supports the idea of getting up to 2703. The monthly says 2783 is your resistance zone. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Real quickly here on EPD, um, I did want to share with uh, Jack that on a uh, short-term basis, a 30-minute, uh, you've got a TD9 count top that took place right at its uh, uh, task market profile resistance level of 2653. So I would expect this to pull back. I'd expect it to pull back further towards its oscillator and change line. I would target the 2641 level. Price closes below that. We're looking to move to 2627 out there. But otherwise, on a longer term basis, you know, the charts look like they want to move higher. Whether this is a good investment for, for the uh, long term dividend or not, I, I can't make that uh, decision out there. Um, uh, but I can share with you what the charts here are communicating to you. So thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. Bob in Spokane wants to take a look at ticker. Am I on the right screen? Yeah, I am. Okay, good. Uh, ENVX is the uh, ticker we're going to go take a look at. Give me a moment. We'll get over there. That is uh, NOVIX Corporation, which right now is trading above the top of a daily profile that formed yesterday. Now, that is bearish in structure out there, Bob. So that's a beautiful thing. The top of that profile is 1886. It's also taken on a swing point from two days ago. That swing did 8.3 million. You're already at 3 million. We're only two hours in the trading session. So it's taking out a swing point with volume. Not that that was a topping signal or not, but a price does. Well, today we're getting a topping signal. Uh, well, we haven't just yet. It's got a spike above 1953. Now, today is 1950. So if we can spike above that, 1953, then you're going to get a daily TD9 count bar number eight. 90% of the time you get a successful bar number eight, you go on and complete the pattern out there. So that says you could or should see a short-term top in NOVIX Corp between today and Tuesday of next week. The weekly chart looks very good. When I say very good, there's a nice A to B equals CD. Last week, price took out a TD9 count top out there. So all looks well. Let's see where the A to B equals CD is going to take us to approximately. We'll just simply move that over. So the one-to-one, -one, well, we're already past that. So we're doing more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside on the weekly time frame. That really, though, says, hey, Bob, let's watch the daily. Now, not that the TD9 count, not all TD9 counts, you know, work out there. So you watch what you expect and you anticipate what price will do, which is pull back and test support. We've identified support, both the top of its profile, the daily time frame up at the 1886 level. And, of course, it's oscillator and change line. The monthly chart here says it wants to make a move to 2249. So I think over over time, that's what it wants to do. I think it's just getting ready for a bit of a uh, timeout. That's likely to take place between today and uh, Tuesday of next week out there. So hope that that helps you out, and thanks much for taking the time to write in. Let's go to our first caller out here. It is Garo in uh, Newport Beach. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm very good. How about you, sir? Very good. Thanks much for asking. Uh, I haven't talked to you for a while. How's 2023 going? Yes, sir. Very good. I'm a happy oh, camper. I'm always happy camper. And I'm That's very proud thing. of being in America. Absolutely. Well, yeah. yes, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, yes, sir. So, yeah, so you say you've got some questions about moving averages. Um, how can I best help you? Because you, you're probably an expert with moving averages. You can probably help me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's not <laughs> like so. Uh, but I have a question, a personal question from you. Um, between between uh, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen, sixty, or one twenty, if you want to do a day, the day uh, if you want to do a day trading, and you had only one choice, which one would you choose between all these moving averages, and why? Moving averages. Wow. So I uh, that's a great question, and and I I I can't answer that. And, and not uh -huh. that I don't want to answer that, but it's just simply that I I don't use moving averages per se. Where I use moving uh -huh. averages, where I use moving averages is to calculate the oscillator and change line. That line provides me with way more information, me personally, than moving averages do. But some of that is also from the experience. So. And, and I've got this. I still have the chart for ENVX up. On, well, I'm going to put that up here on my on my screen. Well, tell me what what's something that you're trading right now, Garo? Give me any instrument that you've got to trade on right now. Well, these days, I'm all I'm trading is MDB, Mary Mary David Boy. Okay, so I'm just going to put long or short. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that chart, put those charts up on our screen, and so so when I first developed the oscillator and change line. The reason I developed it was I was trying to understand when a retracement 
a move lower was just a move, was just a normal part of the of the market movement, moving up and down. And in developing that line, this is a green line or green or red line that's on the uh, charts that we're taking a look at right now. What that is, Garo, is that is the difference between two moving averages. Those two moving averages are the 30, 39 and 19 period. Doesn't matter whether it's daily, weekly, intraday, it's 19 and 39 bars. So right now okay. I'm talking about daily okay. time frame. And, and it is the difference between those two. And that sets up that that's that, uh, an oscillator is a difference between two things, and that sets up the uh, that sets up the the oscillator unchanged line out there. Now, when price is above that, so on a daily time frame, here's what we know about MDB. Let me just get. I'm sorry, moved off center there. So what we know about MDB is because price is trading below a green oscillator unchanged line, it just tells us that this has lost momentum. Okay, so it's lost momentum. Um, and now what I know is we're inside a bearish structured profile. So resistance gar is at 418.70. That's the top of the profile. That's where sellers reside using the TAS system. We have buyers and sellers that believe there is fair value right now at 405.68. And that is between the entire profile. And that entire profile, the bottom of which is at 379.65. Since we are now below the center of that profile, odds favor a move down to 379.65. So if you were to ask me to use one line, one, and you asked about a moving average, so I'm going to take the moving average and just whip that over to the oscillator and change line. If I were using that and then using these profile levels, they would tell me to be short this instrument. Now, I don't know that you want to short this instrument at 395 with it headed to 379. I don't know if that matches your risk reward, but directionally speaking, that's what this is signaling to you and I, the daily time frame. We have a different approach on the weekly chart. The weekly chart has a different message. The message on the weekly chart says, I don't see a top. I'm above resistance because it's above profile and I'm above that green oscillator and change line. When you're above a green oscillator and change line, girl, that tells us you, you have strong momentum to the upside. So the weekly chart is communicating to you and I that this wants to move higher. So how do we put all that together? I put that together and say, okay, maybe just this is just simply nothing more than just a pullback to test support. The first support level would have been the oscillator and change line. When you move below that, you go to the next support level. In this case here, we can see it's the bottom of its profile. And there's one last level of support on this instrument at 365.11, and that is the breakout area. And that breakout was caused by the TD9 count. Now, this TD9 count did not generate what I would call a TD9 count top because the top or the high did not take place on bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9. But that could be a support level. So I would say MDB is very likely going to pull back and test support either 365.11 or 379.65 and then resume its move higher. And then move higher eventually should take us to 519.54. Now, we're about to go to a hard break here. I just want to get all that in, Garo. So process that and then come back to me after the break with some additional questions and we'll try to help you out as best we can. Steve Rhodes yes, with sure. TFNN. We'll be right back with Garo in Newport Beach, California, in just a few. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at ticker symbol MDB with Garo in Newport Beach, California. We're talking a little bit about moving averages, mostly about my oscillator and change line. Now, Garo, I know that you use the 5, the 21, the 50, and the 200 uh, 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 moving averages. I believe you're using uh, the uh, standard, the simple moving average versus exponential. Yes. That's a whole nother, um, you know, another, a whole nother aspect to talk about. But what questions, after after looking at the white background charts. I now have your version of the charts up on my screen here. And I believe in your case, correct me if I'm wrong, but you wouldn't get a sell signal in this until the five crossed over the 21 on a daily time frame. Is that correct? That is true. Five and 21 has to cross the 50 day. If it goes up, it crosses upwards, the long starts. When five and 21 crosses downwards of 50 day, that short starts. So not until, I, not I, until, I not, sure. yes. Bo yeah, so bo bo both the five and the 21 have to cross below. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. That's, that's good uh, to know. That's 30 a, minutes. If you bring the 30 minutes, uh, 30, 30 minutes, minute, okay. Yeah. Um, on a, on a 30 minutes, if you bring the five and five and 21 and you have 50 day, whenever the five and 21 crosses downwards, the 50 day, the short starts, until the 5 and 21 goes up and crosses upwards the 50 day, then the long starts. Okay. Uh, but I do my buying and selling only with 10 minutes, uh, the, the 10 minute time frequency. And even on 10 minute time frequency, you will see that if the 5 crosses 50 downwards, the short yep. starts. And uh, whenever the 5 crosses upward the 50 day, uh, the long starts, but that's going to be all temporary until on the 30 minutes, the 5 and 21 crosses upwards the 50 or downwards. If it's down, the, the short continues until the 5 and 21 crosses upwards, then the long starts. This, is the, uh, this is the strategy I use for years now. So, Interesting. Um, if you want to do the time frequency, which time frequency do you use for uh, for day trading? Do you use 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes or 60 minutes? So great question. So the, the answer to that uh, first, um, let me answer that question. Um, 
First, I've, I, first MDB, you use a 10-minute chart. I just want to share with you here. MDB on a 10-minute mm-hmm. chart formed a TD9 count top. It did it right at a time when I believe you were about to get a, a sell signal. It did this at 1530, and that was on July 5th. When I take a look at your charts out here, it was July 6th I see a crossover. Well, first I see the crossover of the 5 below the 21 on July 5th at, at, uh, at right around the uh, close. And then I see the crossover below the 50 right around 8, 10 in the morning on July the 6th. So it seems like I was getting a topping signal and you were getting your patterns out there as well. With regard to what time frames do I use, it really depends on what it is that I'm trading. So as an example, I'm going to switch screens right now. If I were trading a an equity instrument like MDB, then the time frames that I look at let me see if I'm on the right screen here. I'm not. Let me switch over. The time frames that I use for individual equity instruments are going to be 15, 30, 65, 130, and 195. Those would be the intraday time periods. The reason I would use those time periods, not that you can't go below 15. You most certainly can. But you asked me what time periods do I use. These would be the ones that I use. And they all equally uh-huh. divide into a six-and-a-half-hour day. So now I know that each bar that I look at with regard to volume, with regard to the bar itself, is going to match the prior bar, at least with regard to time. So those would be the time frames that I use. If I am trading uh, futures contracts out here, then I use different time frames because I don't have six and a half hours that I'm working with here. There I've got 23 hours and some change. So here what I'm dealing with, for time frames, then I'm using 10, 15, 30. Now, 30 is my favorite out there with regard to the overall signals because it cuts out a lot of the intraday noise. Uh, but I am also looking at the hourly, the two hour, the four hour, the five hour. But it would be those time frames that I would use there. Um, of course, what I'm always looking at is what's going on on the larger time frame. So now that we know that we have some new profiles that just formed here for the ES, the NQ, and the Russell 2000, and their message to us, Garo, is to expect consolidation market to continue, then I, when we have that message, I would really start focusing in on the shorter term time frames, looking for those signals. So here in the NQ right now, which I believe is what we have up on the screen, it was really all, what I really do look for. When I trade the futures market, Garo, is I look for synergy. And when I say synergy, I'm looking for signals for the uh, for a, for a time frame because you asked me about a time frame. So when I see a signal on one time frame, what I then do is I go over to the charts for the for the uh, for the same time frame, but for all of the instruments or all four instruments, which I'm pulling up on my screen right now. So here we saw the TD9 counts this morning. So as I was going through and producing a newsletter for clients this morning. I was aware and I made them aware of three out of the four instruments had formed TD9 count bottoms. Actually, the fourth one, the Russell 2000, did that yesterday. So that told us we had a nice solid bottom. And if price closed below that, it would tell us one thing. And if price mm -hmm. closed above uh, its breakout levels, it would tell us something else. So, again, we had some synergy here uh, this morning. So those would be the time frames. And, again, it would be different time frames for an equity instrument uh, versus if I'm using for a uh, futures contract. Does any of that make any sense to you? Yeah, I don't do futures, and I have the platform, and I, I don't know any. I know the principle of that, but I cannot make money out of it. You see, you have to be very slick to make money out of something. Just knowing is not enough. Uh, but yeah, the absolutely, I'm, I'm been doing this for the past 26 years, and I'm been very, very successful. Uh, so uh, the, that that's that's the way I was doing. But no, that's I, perfect. Thank you very much. That was very good information, sir. That was very perfect. Perfect. Very nice perfect. Garo, always great to speak with you. I hope uh, <laughs> I hope to hear from you. Uh, I hope to hear from you again soon. And uh, thanks for calling. Yes, Have sir. a fabulous weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you too, sir. Thank you so much. Bye bye. You bye. you bet. That was Garo, Newport Beach, uh, California. Uh, that actually takes us, since we happen to be here on a, a set of charts here, that takes us really to our next question, which came in from Rachel. Uh, and so I've got the multi uh, time frame charts up on our screen for that. So let me figure out where I put her question right here. It says, off today, and I'm enjoying it by watching your show. Well, thank you for doing that. Pleasure to get to enjoy your show live. Wondering if you would take a look at PCOR for me. Looks to have a great base and pending breakout. You bought a small starter position. So let's actually get over. Well, so we've got those charts up on our screen. Give me just a moment here. I just want to make sure that I've got the good data feed. So PCOR. 
I believe that I do. Trading out at about 63. It's actually last trade fired up at 63.74. My screen is showing 63.89. Uh, no problem there. So first, on a monthly basis, you've got a nice TD nine count rose momentum indicator bottom. And what price is doing on a monthly basis here is taking on profile resistance. Now, it closed above it for June. You'd love to see a second close above it this month, it being 63.21. So, Rachel, if you get a close above 63.21 the month of July, uh, you should be off to the races. Now, where would the races take us to here? Well, I would say that would then set up an A to B equals CD to the upside. That's what I would first be looking at. So I'm going to just take a look at the longer term chart. Well, at least I'll do this during the breakout here. So I see we're at the end of the uh, break and I've got some more questions. I mean, at the end of the break, almost to the end of the show. So we'll try to make I try to get to those questions if we can. But you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside out here doesn't really take us much higher than where we're at. It wasn't really an A to B equal CD. It was a consolidation pattern. So we'll take a look at that during the breakout here. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol PCOR. This is for Rachel out here, uh, Procore Technologies, PCOR. And so this isn't as favorable seasonal cycle. Now, we only have three years worth of data, so it's very limited. But we are in this favorable seasonal cycle, which should take us up into about the early part of August. But if we look at the daily chart out here, what we can see is you've got some pretty strong resistance between 66.48 and 67.20. So that's really in your re next resistance zone is actually at 65.61 out there. Now, price close below 63.80, uh, 63.61. If you get too close below that, 
it, you, you be careful because it's going to open up the door for $57. Now, on a monthly basis, what you have is a consolidating pattern out there. And not until price takes out the consolidation high, which I would say is right about 68, 68 out there, is that going to suggest that we've got a consolidation measure move breakout? But if we do, that gets you up to the 95-ish area. So you're up towards resistance on the monthly. You're up towards resistance. You're getting up towards resistance on the uh, daily chart as well. So that's what I'd be taking care of. But you're in a nice seasonally favorable cycle out there next question coming in from uh let's see this was coming in from fletch want to take a look at charter communication charter communication or chtr is going to confirm a td9 count top today will complete on monday i would expect or anticipate a retracement or a pullback that pullback the first target will become 370.63 and below that at around 358 or so i like the uh, weekly chart monthly chart has got resistance up a bit higher but you are running into a td9 count top so expect or anticipate a short-term pullback. The last question was to take a look at um, long-term buy signals for natural gas. Uh, where did I put that? Oh, let's switch over to this set of charts out here. Uh, so uh, we've got just a few seconds. If you're looking for what's a long-term signal, uh, long-term can mean something different for you and me. But here, if you're looking for a long-term signal, well, you've got it really on the yearly chart. So as I open up this chart here right now, you'll see that we are in bar number nine on natural gas of a TD9 count. Now it can extend to next year as well out there. The monthly chart, by the way, for natural gas, it has a road momentum indicator bottom pattern with price consolidating with inside its profiles out there. So Ron, although we couldn't get to boil UNG, I hope that helps you out. Folks, stay tuned. We got great program lined up. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Magical Monday. Take care and thanks for joining us today.